Hey guys, welcome to this video on sigma notation and larger sums. So what we're going to be looking at are working with sigma notation with kind of just what do you do with a big sum like this. So you should already know something about sigma notation. If you don't, I do have a video just covering the basics of it. And if you've never watched one of my videos before, um, I would recommend pausing and trying the examples when prompted. Also, there are free guided notes available at divideandconquermath.com. And I have to say for this video, I think that having those notes actually would be really handy. So just, just my thoughts on that. So before we get started, I wanted to remind you of just a couple of things that we've talked about already. So um, I, I've i talked about in a previous video, just some of the basic algebraic rules for um, sums. So for sigma notation. So you've got the sum rule and the difference rule, and then the constant multiple rule and the constant value rule. So if you don't have these written down in front of you, I would recommend taking a second to pause the video and write these down. And then also, I want to introduce these other sums. So these are actually really handy formulas to kind of expedite the process of summing. So if you know just what the basics of sigma notation are, you have probably already realized that it's, it's kind of a, a boring process to calculate, right? And one of the issues with sigma notation is it's fine if you have like a very small sum, but what do you do if you've been asked to sum like, I don't know, like 40 terms or something? Are you just gonna sit there and, and calculate 40 terms by hand? You're not. So this is a formula for the first n terms. This is for the first um, n squares, and this is for the first n cubes. You're totally gonna wanna have this written down in front of you so that you can kind of work on some of the example problems if you're trying to figure out how this works. So pause the video and write those down. So here's the first example I have for us on kind of using some of these formulas. So looking at this, so we can use one of the algebraic rules. So we can use the constant multiple rule, which says that if I have a constant times some formula, I can just pull that constant out like here. So that's the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna take out the constant and now I can just focus on this k squared. Now, if you think about this, if I actually went through and did this from one to 15, again, that would just take me a while. So this is where then we use some of these formulas that I just showed you. So this is, um, we're gonna talking about the first 15 squares. So this will be the formula that I just wanna plug everything into. So let's do it. This will ultimately equal three times, and then this is 15 times 15 plus 1 times 2 times 15 plus 1, all of this divided by 6. So now we've just got to work this out. So you're going to just calculate, you know, doing 15 times 16 times 31, all of this divided by 6. And if you multiply all of this together, so you can just punch this into your calculator, you get 3,720. So much faster to just have that formula, right? And to just go through and, and zip through it. So that's kind of the idea behind this. So I have two more examples that I think you should try. So this one is nice and straightforward, but it'll allow you to use kind of some of the other formulas. Highly recommend that you pause the video here, hit play when you're ready to check the solution. Okay, so in this case, so I can break this up really into a couple different pieces. So I can do this this um, first 52 cubes, and then I can do the first 52 terms like this, and then this last one is gonna use the constant um, constant value rule. So, Here's kind of my three pieces. So I'm gonna color code this just so you can follow my work. So for this first part, so if I write out the, the formula for that, so this comes out to 52 times 53, all of this divided by two squared. So that's using this formula here. And I just went ahead and did um, 52 plus one, so I just kind of plugged everything in. So there's the first part. Now we're gonna have plus four times, and now I'm gonna go ahead and use a formula for this one. So this will come out to, uh, 
um, let's see, I'll go ahead and maybe write some parentheses here. So this will be 52 times 53 divided by 2. So that would be just this part of the sum here, and that's using this formula here, using the first n terms. And then this last one, so this one I can use the constant value rule, so I'll just remind you what that is. So that's this one right here, so I'll just take n times that constant, so in this case that would be 52 times the constant. So this last part, this will be minus 52 times 2. So there's kind of all the, the pieces of this, and so then once again you just kind of plug it all into your calculator. And when I work all of this out, I get um, 1,904,292. So this was way faster, right, to calculate than to do it this way than to have to go through 52 terms. So you can see definitely the benefit of this. So I have one more, which has got a little bit of a twist to it, just to kind of show you some things that can happen with these. So just notice that um, I have k times all of this. And in our list of rules, we don't have anything about when, you know, a k is multiplied by another k. So as this stands, you can't actually use any of the rules. It's not like you can do um, the first n terms and then try to kind of break break all this up. Our, our algebraic rules, if you go back through the list, like our constant multiple rule, that only works for if you have whole numbers. Um, it doesn't work for like splitting up two formulas. We don't have that rule in our list as it stands. So I can't just use this as it is. Instead what I'm going to have to do is first I have to just distribute my k and then I can go business as usual. So also just make sure that when you're writing this down that you put parentheses around all of this just to indicate that all of this is now the sum. So before these were two things being multiplied together so you didn't need parentheses around the whole thing but now you now you do. So once again I would recommend that you try using those formulas. Um, go ahead and calculate what this should equal and then hit play when you're ready. So if I break this up so I'll have this part and then I'll have this part. And once you get really used to using these, you probably won't even necessarily break these up. You'll probably just understand how, kind of how it works, but I want to make sure I'm being nice and thorough since um, I'm assuming you guys are just getting used to this. So, all right, um, so using the formula for k squared, so if I just plug in those pieces, so this comes out to, um, 35 times 36 and then times 71, all of this divided by 6. So I just plugged in, so using the first n squares formula, so my n was equal to 35 here, so 35, 36, and then um, 71. That's how I did that calculation there. So there's that first part. And then for the second part, so if I'm now going to work on this piece here, which, uh, sorry, I just realized I didn't color code the, the first part, but I, I hopefully you guys are kind of seeing where I'm going with this. So now this is going to be 35 times 36, all of this divided by 2. And so then if you work all this out, you get 32,970 when you cal calculate all that. Okay, so that, that's really kind of what I wanted to show you guys in this video. So um, I have more videos on working with these types of sums, but this is just kind of a, a good little summary of kind of how to use some of those more handy formulas. Thanks for watching. I hope I see you again.